So anyway, establishing these different places where the points are doing these various, various things here. Um, for instance, we know that that's theta equals zero because when theta is equal to zero, if I plug that in, I get a radius of one. So that's kind of the, uh, the key to this is just getting a sense of where is this going and how is this looking and um, what are all these, these different points doing. So that said, um, let's keep the, uh, the rotations going and try to figure out if we do the area of the yellow. I know that this is from theta equals two um, to all the way out here, which is theta is equal to, um, let's see, theta, or sorry, theta equals pi over two. And if I go all the way out here, this is theta is equal to pi. If I plug that back in here, I get one plus two. So that is a radius of three and that would work. So basically what I'm arguing is this is the integral of the outer one, which is from pi over two to pi of, um, let's see, the outer one is going to be pi over two to pi of, um, and I'm doing this area here. So pi over two of pi of the outer one, which is the one minus two cosine of theta quantity squared. Um, and I have the uh, one half right here, d theta <coughs> minus that same integral. So I don't nearly need to write them as separate integrals. I can just do it as a, a single one. So minus the integral of, um, well, we'll do it as a separate one for now, pi over two to pi of one squared d theta. And we'll keep the one half factored out. And then, yeah, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by a two because it's reflected about the x-axis. And that's going to give me a good sense of how this works. So I'm, I'm going to let this integral sit and stand for now. You can, it can be evaluated later, but it's going to be more important at times to set these integrals up than actually evaluate them. So this becomes a means of actually getting the, uh, the yellow space down. That I'm doing an integral um, and doubling it, which is relatively efficient. And we get that going. Now let's get the, uh, the yellow down or that the yellow down, the pink down. And that's a little bit more challenging because I need starting at a theta of, this right here is not a theta of zero. This, this is the theta of zero. It moves over here to where we have a theta of pi over three. This is theta is equal to pi over three. So if I do an integral from pi over three to pi over two, um, that's gonna get this sliver here going. And that's gonna be, um, the integral of one minus the cosine of theta squared one half times with a d theta. That's that little sliver. Then we move to add the outside piece. So we want to add this region here, which is a that's a difference. That's going to be an integral from pi over two to pi of one squared d theta and then one half times, minus, and I wanna get this little piece here. Now, this little piece is, is a little bit strange. It's not an integral from pi over two to pi. It's actually, if I go from here to here, it's an integral from theta is equal to zero to theta is equal to pi over three. Um, and that gives me that area that I just squiggled in right down here, which is equivalent to the area up here, so it doesn't matter which side we take. Um, one half uh, times that of the one minus the cosine of theta quantity squared d theta. So all of this is, uh, that, that would be the area of the pink one. So it's a little bit tricky. You have to play around with the visualizations and you have to try to see where these are occurring. So let's do one more example. Um, let's call this number two radius is equal to negative six cosine of theta, and then r is equal to two minus two cosine of theta. So first things first is having a sense of which curve is which. Um, this one right here is the red curve because it's a circle moving to the left. And um, what this question is just gonna ask is what's, what area is common to both curves? So common to both curves is going to be area contained inside the region that's that's with both. So that's going to be this region here. And I'm only writing the top part, part because I only want to deal with 
that top. I mean, I can do the bottom one is going to, we're just going to do it two times on the whole thing to make that happen. I'm going to put it two times a giant. And then let's get the, uh, the angles down. So in both cases, we're starting with an angle of zero. That's good. This is theta equals zero. And then let's look at slices as we move upwards. Um, slices being radii moving out from that. We hit a region right away where I go from here and I need to get this particular segment right there. So I want to figure out where they cross and where they intersect. Where do they both have the same value? Um, you can see right here that that's in an angle of 2 pi over 3. So with really, really nicely labeled graphs, we don't forget we can just get an angle right here of 2 pi over 3. So this curve, we're only going to do the area of the red one, 1 half integral from 0 to 2 pi over 3 of the red curve, which is negative 6 cosine of theta quantity squared, d theta. Then we're going to add a Let's do another sweepage. That's just going to be the green curve now um, for the rest of it. So we're going to add one half integral from 2 pi over 3 to pi of the 2 minus 2 cosine of theta squared d theta. And that is a setup. You can kind of do the entire integration from that point, but um, that's, that's the bigger picture setup of the whole thing. Just as a refresher, if you're doing this by hand and you're actually trying to figure out this, these integrals, to integrate cosine squared theta requires you to know the cosine double angle identities. Cosine squared minus sine squared um, or 2 cosine squared theta minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. And the substitutions you do are the key to doing that. But the questions usually just have you set it up. So that's all for now.